first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. Thank you very much for joining us. We are live streaming here out of the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom. We're here every weekday. We go throughout the afternoon, starting at 1 o'clock, and we cover a wide range of topics and get to have longer form discussions. Right now, we are going to be talking about volcanoes and one in particular, an underwater volcano off of the Oregon coast around 300 miles called the Axial Seamount. This is something you may have seen in the news previously. It's one of the most monitored volcanoes in the world, really, specifically uh, when it comes to undersea volcanoes, and it may be erupting. This is something that we've heard here over the last couple of years of a potential eruption for that. I want to just start off by saying this, and we're going to address this during this interview. That does not mean there's any danger to anyone. Uh, there's, you don't have to worry about this if you're on the, on the, uh, on the land uh, near Oregon or on Oregon's coast. Uh, but this is a very fascinating circumstance, and there's a lot that can be learned from this. And the people who are leading this study, two of them anyway, as part of this, are joining us right now. Uh, we've got Bill and Scott here with us. And you guys, thank you very much you know, for joining us here and, and being a part of this show. And just always appreciate your conversation and, and uh, knowledge on this. So I think to start off, for anybody who doesn't know, would you mind just giving that basic explainer of what the axial seamount is? Uh, sure. Uh, <clears throat> so axial seamount is an underwater volcano, like you said, uh, located about 300 miles due west of Astoria, Oregon. Uh, so it's pretty far offshore. It's also pretty deep. It's almost a mile deep below the surface. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why it's not a hazard because it's so far offshore, it's so deep. Uh, when it erupts, it really doesn't have any effect on us here on the, on the coast. But um, it's very active and that's what makes it interesting to geologists like us. Uh, so it's erupted three times in the last 30 years. Uh, the last time in 2015 and uh, partly because of that, uh, it's monitored by this really amazing um, monitoring network. There's a cable that goes from Pacific City all the way out to this volcano on the seafloor, and it's uh, <clears throat> lots of monitoring instruments plugged in, so we can actually look at data that's being collected out there on our computers anytime. So that's really you know uh, unique, and um, you know it's really the only underwater volcano in the world that has that kind of monitoring network. So um, because it's so active, it's a place we can learn a lot from how volcanoes work and what triggers eruptions and so forth. So we're, we've been doing this experiment. Um, we've, one of the things we monitor is how the volcano uh, inflates and deflates as magma is stored inside it, as it, it comes up uh, from depth below. And uh, it's from the, la the monitoring data from the last 30 years, we see it has a very repeatable pattern of inflation and deflation. So it kind of inflates like a balloon as it's filling with magma. And then during eruptions, it deflates as a lot of that magma is erupted onto the seafloor. Um, so we're, uh, we've been watching it reinflate since 2015, and we've been trying to use that pattern to try to anticipate uh, when it's gonna erupt again. Um, Partly because it's uh, because it's such a benign place, you know, far away from humans, we can try to make forecasts uh, without worrying people too much, hopefully, um, and and seeing if they turn out to be correct or not. So we're this this sort of forecasting thing we're doing is really an experiment to see if long range forecasting of an eruption is possible, because that's usually very difficult at volcanoes around the world. And, um, you know, we're kind of trying to push the envelope on, on forecasting and see what we can learn. Um, and when it, when it comes to that side, when it comes to the forecasting side of things, I know, I know I, we spoke, and certainly I've seen some of your research about that forecast of potentially erupting in 2025 and, uh, and using all of that data. I understand that's a lot of data to go through, and this is part of the learning process of this, but it looks like it's not going to erupt here in 2025 <laughs> unless it's the next couple of weeks, and I could be wrong right. on that. Um, right. but we're running out of time. We're running out of time to make that, <laughs> to make that limit. Um, yeah. But given that, you know, and this is another year of data that you've had here, 
uh, to, to gather and to learn more from this. Do you have any kind of a newer prediction on when you think we might see an eruption from the actual seamount? Right. So uh, we we our latest forecast was that it was going to erupt before the end of this year. Yeah. And so it's kind of it's looking like that's not going to happen. Um, nothing seems to be imminent. You know, we don't really know. It could happen any day. But yeah, it's things are pointing to it's going to take longer than we thought. And um, basically, we uh, we made this before the end of 2025 forecast in July 2024, so it was a year and a half ago. So at that time, it was inflating at a at a at a rate that would have taken it to what we think is the upper threshold of inflation when eruptions are triggered by now. But um, since then, the rate of inflation has decreased a bit, so that's what's. Uh, prolonging this phase, uh, and we think. So, um, yeah, basically it's going to, it looks like it could take another year to get up to this upper threshold where we think eruptions are triggered. So, um, yeah, if it doesn't erupt by, <laughs> by the end of 2025, I think we're going to have to revise it to the end of 2026 and see, see if that works out. We're also... The, you know, the forecasting we've done so far is really just based on this pattern, repeated pattern and the level of inflation. And we're trying to incorporate with colleagues more um, some other models with some physics in it that's more than just pattern recognition. And, and those other kind of physics based um, models are also pointing to sometime in 2026. So we're we're trying to get these forecasts as a little more robust and but yeah so it looks looks like uh we may have to you know we're going to be going into 2026 and seeing what happens next year when it comes to that working with other other departments too in other fields i mean and having that uh the regional cable the ray and all of that stuff out there you know having that kind of information that you can get you know how how valuable is that just for general research on volcanoes and their activity to have all of these different fields all working together and collectively sharing that data to analyze what's going on yeah scott why don't you comment it's, on that it, yeah it's critical um Bill mentioned a minute ago that there's another group that we're working with now who are building more physics-based forecast models. And uh, the more data that you can feed into those models, um, a different data types, the the better they do. So that's just one example of of how working with different groups and having more of all types of data about the volcano uh, help. So yeah, cri it's critical. The, the, the more people, more minds thinking about these things and the, the more different types of data and the longer the data time series that we have, the better we can understand these systems, yeah. And it's, it's okay. kind of interesting because it's, uh, you know, our, our attempts to kind of do this pattern recognition uh, forecasting is, you know, gotten a lot of attention and it's but it's shed shed light on this repeated pattern so now other researchers are are kind of see, seeing what they can contribute to this effort and in d using different methods mm -hmm. so it's kind of it's kind of nice that um you know that there's we're sort of getting more and more of a critical mass of of mm -hmm. people uh working on this problem and and it's it's a way of making progress in science, so I'm I'm super pleased with that. I is I was going to ask: Is this kind of uh, research you know that you're doing here for the Axial Sea Mount? Is that something that could be, you know, utilized in other volcanoes? If you look at some of the ones on the Pacific Rim, or you know, even here in the Cascades where we're located, that uh, is that kind of data something that could be utilized for that? Potentially, you know, it's. Um, this long range forecasting has um, generally been thought to be kind of in, you know, too difficult to attempt because especially on land when, you know, you, you don't want to issue any kind of forecast if you're not sure about it and because of the societal ramifications and 
Um, don't want to freak people out unnecessarily. Um, so it's that's one of the reasons why we've been trying it at this submarine volcano because we don't have to worry about that so much. Um, but I think it's it's because it's gotten this attention. I think even on land, um, scientists are trying to push the envelope as uh, where there does seem to be a repeatable pattern to see what kind of um, you know, forecasting is possible at longer time periods. So. You, you, I, in general, at volcanoes on land, um, it's possible to make short-term predictions, like meaning just hours or days before an eruption starts, because you know magma is generally stored um, at depth in the Earth, and but once it starts heading to the surface, it makes a lot of commotion, lots of earthquakes, lots of uplift, and so. In well monitored areas, you can see when that's happening, you know, as I say, hours to days before an eruption starts. So, generally, these short term uh, predictions are possible. Um, so, we're what we're doing is trying to expand this, you know, see how far in advance um, we can make a time window in which we think an eruption is, is going to happen. And I should say that, you know, this. This actually worked at Axial before the 2015 eruption. Um, at that time, it was inflating very rapidly and very steadily. And and because of that, we were able to make a short time window um, that turned uh, for a, an eruption forecast that turned out to be successful. So that's that's kind of why we keep trying to do this to see if we can do it again. But this time, the rate of inflation has been very variable. And so it's really made it difficult to extrapolate, you know, as I said, when we're going to get to this critical inflation threshold. And so we haven't been as successful this time. Um, I want to address something else, too, because you do see a lot of, you know, when people hear about a volcano, when they hear about eruptions, that's really, you know, it's, it's an exciting thing, but also can be scary for people. And you see a lot of different things that show up online. I see them myself. And so I right. wondered if we could address some of those too for anybody who's watching right now, who, um, you know, commenting or going through this. Uh, for, to, to ask one, you know, just right off the bat, and we addressed it a little bit at the beginning, but to do it again. For the axial seamount, if this were to erupt, say tomorrow, what would be any concern that people could have or what actually would happen uh, if that were to, ha were to, to go off? Right. Um, yeah, thanks for addressing that because, um, you know, this this eruption forecast has gotten a lot of attention in the media. And so uh, a lot of people have gotten concerned unnecessarily. I've, I've gotten emails myself with, you know, people really worried that live on the Oregon coast, you know, how how is this going to affect me? And the answer is not at all. So uh, for anybody that's worried about this, you do not need to worry about this volcano. Because it's, as I said at the beginning, it's it's so far offshore, it's so deep. These kind of eruptions are not explosive. They're like eruptions in Hawaii and Iceland. So lots of lava comes out on the seafloor, but it has no effect on the sea surface. It has no effect on the coast. There's lots of earthquakes, but they're all very tiny. So uh, really, no one is going to know it when this <laughs> erupts, except for the people looking at the data from this cabled observatory that's on the seafloor where there's seismometers and pressure sensors, and the, they're all going to show lots of activity. But um, yeah, n no one will know it until, uh, you know, we we see it on these instruments that are on the seafloor. So um, uh, there's no there's no chance there's going to be a tsunami from this eruption. There's no, it's an eruption at Axial Seamount is not going to cause the subduction zone earthquake to happen. They're too far apart. And it's erupted three times in the last 30 years, right? And nothing's happened. So um, it's, it's really nothing to worry about. It's very benign. Um, yeah, so don't worry. Okay, good. Yeah, I want to make sure, sure I got that out there. Are there any other wild things that you've seen out there printed that, that you wanted to address? <laughs> oh man, if <laughs> I looked at YouTube the other day and and did a search on Axial Seamount and there's just a huge number of uh, ridiculous videos that are like, <laughs> you know, scientists are panicking, you know, <laughs> it's gonna be a disaster, you know, it's, 
<laughs> it's all total uh, exaggeration and fabrication. So don't believe that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, stop panicking and uh, and just you know just and I mean at the end of the day you know how exciting is it for the both of you you know for studying something like this to have this relatively in the backyard here at least for the state of Oregon you know for the Pacific Northwest and and also just have this much data coming in that you can all work on and collect and actually get in real time. It's yeah, incredible. It's yeah, it's incredible. It's very rare to be able to study a volcanic system that erupts several times in your career. So the, it's it's a special place, and you know you learn the most about volcanoes when they erupt, and you can see the entire cycle. So it's it's great. Yeah, it's a fantastic place because of that. Yeah, we we treat it as kind of a natural laboratory where. Um, we can learn about how volcanoes work and try to do this experiment with forecasting and yeah, hopefully learn a lot each time it erupts. And I'm sure we will uh, mm -hmm. when it erupts again. We have more instruments and, and more knowledge going into this next eruption than we've had in any, any of the previous ones. Right. So. Right. So a lot to be learned there. Um, with all of that, you know, my, my last question, do you want to throw out a date? <laughs> uh, go on the record about it <laughs> we can't be that precise basically we're we've been kind of making these big wind time windows in which we think it all erupts. so yeah my current thinking is by the end of 2026 and we'll we'll see all if, right if we're, we're, or at least i'm hopeful but i think we're all hopeful that maybe it'll be in the first half of 2026. Yeah, I agree. I'm hopeful it'll be in the first half. We actually have a, a research cruise scheduled to go out there next September. So uh, it would be awesome if it erupted before then. Yeah, that would be great. Well, we will find out then. I mean, uh, this is it is really just exciting. And I just appreciate both of you, you know, joining me to talk about this too and to go through it. I mean, it's it's fast. Volcanoes are fascinating for a reason. And just the fact that it is here in the Northwest. So addressing some of those rumors for everybody out there, you know, as they said, don't panic. Um, but uh, excited to see, you know, if this thing is going to erupt next year. And, you know, I'll talk to you guys sooner. Anything else that you want to make sure to get out there? Uh, no, I think thanks for your interest and, and yeah. happy for the opportunity to, yeah, try to uh, relieve any stress that's out there about this story. Perfect. All right. Well, Bullet Scott, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks. All right. For everybody watching, this is Fox 12 Now. So thanks for joining us, whether you're watching live or after the fact. We have lots of coverage uh, for you. And uh, we've had some interviews on the actual seamount. And actually, speaking of one of the research vessels, uh, vessels, I actually went out on one of those, not out to the volcano, but I went on it while I was in the dock and uh, took a look at some of the different ways that they go out and do all kinds of experiments and research out of the ocean out of Newport, Oregon. So that's a video you can watch on the Fox 12 uh, Oregon app or uh, if you're on our YouTube channel, it's on there as well. So you can check those out if you want to find out more. And thanks for joining us. We will uh, sign off for right now. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.